Hi, I'm Gary Anderson, ex-technical director of Jordan Grand Prix and Stuart Grand Prix, and now Formula One technical consultant for Autosport. And we're here at the Lola Wind Tunnel facility in Huntingdon, uh, with Chris Saunders, who's Lola's aero consultant, and Mark Williams, who used to work for Lola, then McLaren, and he's now a motorsport consultant. Mark, this is a wind tunnel, and it's basically here to prove your design, prove your thoughts, your ideas, to make the car go faster on the racetrack. But the wind tunnel itself can lead you up the garden path pretty quickly. They can. You really have to stay on top of all the various controlling parameters. There's a couple of things that spring to mind. The first one I'd like to talk about is the belt. That's what this is. Now the belt is our moving ground plane simulating the road underneath the car. And what's absolutely critical is the distance between the belt and the model. That's our ride height. The belt is sucked down onto a platen. And it's very important you monitor this because if the belt lifts up, your clearance to the model changes and effectively your ride height changes and your results change. So belt suction is quite key. The second thing is band relay control. That's what we have here. It's a device for removing band relay before it hits the belt. The idea behind that is that we actually replicate the moving ground and we take the band relay away. Any boundary layer that would be allowed to grow would interfere with the model and would interfere with our results. And many years ago, I got bitten by this problem. And everything you normally do on a car suddenly stops working. But it's very hard to spot. Mm -hmm. And th that obviously affects the results. Now, if you look at cars, let's say the Red Bull currently, it runs along the ground, basically the sparks flying out the back of it. You know, that must be very, very hard to replicate in the tunnel, but that's how they run the car in the circuit. So correlation between those two must be vitally important. Absolutely. I mean, you have to run very close to the belt to simulate some of those conditions. And when you're close to the belt and generating a lot of downforce, it's very easy to lift the belt. So you're always flying the belt at the right height to get good results. And I'm sure you've had bad results, Mark, from the wind tunnel not giving you the, the right performance for different parts in the car? Absolutely. If any of your aerodynamic parts or the airflow coming off them is in contact with any of the wind tunnel surfaces, the walls or the ceiling, then your results change. So there can be a regulation change that you can't exploit because your tunnel's not the right size. So it's really important to operate in the largest possible tunnel. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I think the advent of um, big changes, certainly in uh, Formula One, where uh, wheels get larger, wings get wider. Um, and of course, given that you, the, you're yawing the model to simulate track conditions, you can end up with a front wing that suddenly is too close to the wall. Um, and that has happened, and it still happens, um, to a lesser extent because people learn all the time, but mistakes still get made and you, and, you, know, you read it, such and such correlation hasn't happened, the part on the car doesn't quite work as we hoped it would from the wind tunnel data. I mean, it's, uh, that, and that does happen, and often that's just down to understanding of the wind tunnel model in your particular wind tunnel. So you have to know the wind tunnel well. Mark, you've done many wind tunnel tests and modelling. Obviously, we can see here, this is a sports car model. All these little bits of silver tape holding all the components together, they're all variable and changeable. But what experience have you had with different parts and not getting it quite right when they don't, they don't make sense? I think one of the key things, and it's often underestimated, and I think way back in the beginning, we also underestimated it, is how important it is to have a stiff model. Because the loads on the model, as the scale's gone up, are increasing all the time and hopefully they're increasing because you're finding more downfalls. And that obviously puts strains into your model. So the model's got to be well engineered and the model's got to be stiff enough to handle those loads. And here at Lola, that can all happen, Chris. Well, absolutely. I mean, we have had um, people, customers come into the wind tunnel where models haven't been as stiff um, as they should be. And what that can do is it li literally will deflect under the load. So if the car is set to a particular ride height by the computer system, the computer system thinks it's there because it in essence deems the model to be infinitely stiff, but the model could be 10 millimetres lower at the rear than you actually would expect it to be. So you have to build really, really good, solid, stiff models. And so if someone like Mark came along to do some wind tunnel testing, but with zero experience, will Lola bring their experience to how a to build the model? Absolutely, I wouldn't let him in the door, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yes, of course, so we know, the, we know what we need out of a model um, and often, actually, what happens is that if a customer comes in, then Lola would have designed and manufactured the model for the customer because that's, that just covers all things. Though, you know, they would turn up, the model would be sitting on the end of the strut and ready to run. And that's how we tended to do things. So, but safety is a, a real issue in wind tunnels. 
you have to engineer them well. There's an enormous amount of power. I mean, wind tunnels can have megawatts of power. And if you've ever been unfortunate enough to be in a wind tunnel that's been running at speed and something goes wrong, it happens instantly and there's carnage. So you have to be very, very careful that everything's safe before you press the go button. All right, chaps. Well, thanks very much. Good insight.